Every once in a while, a physics problem comes along that is relatively easy compared to the other ones. We all know how difficult these questions can be. But in this case, to find the magnitude of the linear momentum for each of these cases, we simply have to turn over here to the linear momentum equation. This tells us that the linear momentum is equal to the mass times the velocity. Now, since this question only wants the magnitude of the linear momentum, we can drop the vector notation. So in fact, the equation simplifies even further to just p is equal to mass times v, where v would just represent the speed rather than the velocity. So for instance, in part a, we have a proton whose mass and speed are both given to us. We simply have to plug those two values in. So we'll take the mass of 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms, and then multiply that by the given speed of 5.00 times 10 to the sixth meters per second. Let's pick up our calculators. We'll punch this in nice and easy. And when we get this answer, we end up with 8.35 times 10 to the minus 21. And if we look carefully at our computational setup, we have kilograms multiplied by meters per second. So we're going to end up with a unit of kilograms times meters per second. And that is simply the answer to part A. Many of the rest of the questions will operate similarly. In part B, we do have to be somewhat careful because we are given the mass in grams. Oh no, what do we do? Well, we're going to take the 15 grams and multiply it by 10 to the minus three. That will convert it into the standard unit of kilograms. And then we'll multiply it by the given speed of 300 meters per second. So that's about the most challenging aspect to this question. Let's multiply these two together. We get about 4.5. And then again, it's kilograms times meters per second. Looking at parts C and D, we have the mass in kilograms. The speed is in meters per second in that case, as well as in D. So we'll just punch those in and take a look at what they equal. So here are the corresponding setups for parts C and D. In part C, once we multiply the mass and the speed, we get this answer for our momentum. And then in part D, once we multiply mass and speed, we get this answer for our momentum. And that would complete the answers to this question.